Good morning. Pastor Sean here on March Tuesday, Tuesday, March Tuesday, Tuesday, March 23rd with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has redeemed his people. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has redeemed his people. O come, let us worship him. We continue with uh, Mark's uh, Passion Account with uh, chapter 14, verses 53 through 72. And they led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together, and Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. Yet even about this their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him, and to cover his face, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. All right. We actually, uh, I just preached on this last Wednesday. Yeah, last Wednesday night, our Lenten service. Uh, not Mark's account, but uh, Jesus before the uh, um, council and then Peter's denial. So what I think we'll kind of focus on today is, you know, it's they, they brought up all these people and, and they encouraged people to give false testimony. So they wanted people to come and lie about Jesus. And um, none of their testimony agreed. It was all mishmash. Nothing was, everything that they were trying to do was falling apart. So they're, they're, they're plotting their, their schemes. They're, they're, it's not working because they're, they're lying. I mean, it's all based on lies. They want people to bear false witness against Jesus. So, you know, they're, they, they, want to, <laughs> they want to condemn Jesus by breaking the law. Which it's just like I don't know, the 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 dissonance here is is just it's laughable, but anyway, um, so nothing's working, nothing's working, nothing works, and Jesus is is remaining silent, and finally, uh, the interesting thing here is that he says um, the high priest finally says, um, "Are you the Christ? Are you the Son of God?" And finally, Jesus answers, "I am," and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And so at this, um, 
you know, I imagine that uh, the the high priest tearing his garments and, and you know, what, what more witnesses do we need? I would imagine that he's probably filled with a great deal of shock and alarm because Jesus has been quiet to this point. I mean, when they tried to get him out in the streets, he he was so um, he so easily navigated that so that way nobody could do anything to him. Even when he he said things that they picked up stones to throw at him, he 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 vanished into the crowd. That he 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 eluded their their uh, their efforts. So nothing in no way have they been able to uh to get Jesus he's he's just so slippery and here he just comes right out and says i am which you know if it, he's using the god's name yahweh i am and he you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power so not only he he uses god's name but attributes in it to himself i am the son of god so i mean the the high priest would just buy it wow, you know, a, a, a present has been placed in their laps. It's exactly what they wanted. This is exactly what they needed. Um, because they could say, well, Jesus was using God's name, which again, they, they didn't want to, the, the, one of their laws, the, the, the pharisaical laws, was that you couldn't use God's name. And the idea was, in order to keep the commandment of not profaning his name, they, they built extra commandments around it to protect you from breaking it. So if the basically it would say you don't use his name at all. So that way you can't misuse it. So he's, he's broken one of their essential laws, but then also claiming to be the son of God, which they would regard as blasphemy. Um, and so it's, it's just, it's, it's the perfect indictment. I mean, everything that they were trying to do in secret and not that they're just not doing it in secret, but I mean, everything that they were trying to plot and then scheme and do, uh, and do it all the wrong way has fallen apart. But now finally, um, Jesus does something that according to their law is, is worthy of death. And so it's like, Oh, well now when Jesus speaks, now everything falls into place. And so it's kind of a cool thing that you see going on there is that, you know, as, as these guys are trying to go about it the wrong way, nothing works. But it's only according to Jesus' word that everything falls into place exactly as it should. Now, of course, they hear it as blasphemy. Um, Jesus is merely speaking the truth. He says, I am. I am the Son of God. And so we see that not only is, is an element of, of this text showing us how Jesus, you know, only at his word does anything come together. Only at his word do we see um, anything happen that is good and as it should. But um, but that when when those who are against Christ, who, who do not have faith, hear his word, they hear the truth as a blasphemy. They hear the gospel as something to be condemned. And that's, I mean, to a Christian, I, it's just you can't Say like how how on earth can you take the gospel, the truth of Jesus Christ, and and be so offended by it, so um, struck stricken by it that um, it's it's just you you hear it as a a terrible blasphemy. But I mean that's that's what it is because um, I mean because of sin, obviously our our flesh does not want to hear the word. Um, you know, you've got life and death, these two opposites coming together, and death wants nothing to do with life. <laughs> um, the darkness wants nothing to do with the light. So it makes perfect sense that this would be the way it goes. And and a good reminder for us that, um, you know, I think we get this idea that if, if only people would hear the gospel, if only they, you know, we, we think, well, certainly people who are... Um, against the message they they've it's because they've been in situations where you know a, a church or or christians who you know weren't very good examples that they were pushing you know they added their own agendas into it and just kind of perverted the message that must be it so if i if i could just share with them the 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 truth of the gospel if i could just share with them how much god loves them then they would see and it's not a given you know um People will will see and hear how what they want to see and hear, and it's only through the work of the Holy Spirit changing their hearts that they will be receptive and and see and hear that message as 
as it truly is. Um, so, you know, we always kind of emphasize evangelism and going out and sharing um, the gospel with people. And we, we should. But I think a greater, not a greater, but a, a, on the same level need and encouragement is pray for people. You know, if you know somebody who, who rejects this, that word, pray for them. Pray that the Holy Spirit would change their hearts because without the Holy Spirit changing their heart, without the Holy Spirit acting, <laughs> again, because faith is all what God brings, um, you know, they're, they're not going to be receptive to it. They're not going to hear the truth and the love that you know is, is what the gospel is. So, um, yeah, pray for those people. Pray that the Holy Spirit would, would work on them and make them receptive to hear uh, and to receive Christ. So. All right. Well, that wraps it up for today. So why don't we close in prayer? O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Hope this is a uh, blessing for you, and I hope you... Uh, can think of at least uh, one person today to uh, pray for that uh, that the Holy Spirit would open their hearts to this uh, this wonderful message of love. So, peace be with you.